Um, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Meet the Lamb session. We are the Royal Highland Education Trust, or RET for short, and we deliver food to farming and countryside education across Scotland. You can find out more about what we offer via the link that's just been popped into the chat. Today, we're delighted to join you live from the farm to let you meet some of the 2024 spring lambs. So if you have any questions, can you please pop them in the chat and we are going to attempt to answer every single one of them. Um, there's a lot of schools on the chat today, so we're going to be speaking really, really quickly. Um, so I'm Leslie Mason um, and I'm going to introduce you um, just in a moment to um, our farmer, Angela, who is sitting in the lambing shed. So Angela, can I pass over to you? Of course, Leslie, thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's well this morning and excited to meet some of the lambs that we've got here. Um, now, it might be a little bit noisy because um, the sheep are inside in the shed here and they're waiting very patiently to get let out to the field. Um, See, it's a nice day today. So um, you'll see the sheep behind us um, are a special breed. So they look a little bit different from your normal sheep. So these sheep are oops, these sheep are a pedigree flock of border Leicesters, um, and they live here at Shaw's Mill Farm in Fife. Um, so we have fifteen mummies, fifteen ewes, and they all have baby lambs, um, and they all started being born. We started lambing in February um, for this flock of sheep. We've also got another. 200 sheep that we run at another farm um, and those are slightly different to these ones. They are North Country Cheviots and Texels but we put a Border Leicester Tup or a Daddy Sheep with those to get across of the Border Leicester. So we end up um, with North Country Cheviots and Border Leicesters which is called a Scottish Halfbred and we end up with very big sheep um, with the border Leicester and a Texel, um, which don't have a name yet officially, but they're lovely sheep. So these guys here are our border Leicesters, and you'll recognise them by their big long ears. They've got two big long ears which stick straight up on the top of their head and look like rabbits. Um, so hopefully you can see them. Some of them, I've got some feed in here, so I'm going to give the tub a little bit of a shake and see if they'll come a little bit closer. Make a noise because they know what this is. Angela, oh, can you can you show us can you show us what's in the tub, Angela? We can't quite see yeah. what you're feeding them. Yeah. So in the tub here, uh, let's see if we can get some in my hand to show you a little bit better. So in here, can you see that? Yeah, can see that. Yeah, so in here it's a special starter feed for lambs. So we've got a bit of a mixture of feed. Sorry, I'm just going to put the lid on it because one of the mummies is pinching it. <laughs> um, so in this mixture, we have got things like maize, which is what your cornflakes are made from. Same thing. We've also got. Let me see if I can find one. Somebody's just walked past and they think they're getting out in the, sh in the field. So they're making yeah. a racket. Yeah. We've got peas. So hopefully lots of you like peas. Uh, very good for you. Very high in protein, which helps to build our muscles and make us nice and strong. And that helps the lambs to grow and stay nice and healthy, use lots of energy. What else have we got? We've got um, some bits of barley, tiny little bit of barley there. Okay, and that's a source of carbohydrates, so that helps to give them energy. So just like you guys, you need carbohydrates from things like pasta or potatoes or bread and rolls, and that helps to give you energy. So you've got lots of energy for running about and playing. Um, we've also, oh, here's a nice little bit, you'll recognise this. So that is a piece of maize or a piece of corn. Okay, so just like you, the sheep will have that to eat as well. But usually, 
and it looks like that flat it gets squashed and it gets squashed so that it's easier for the sheep's tummies to digest it and get all the goodness out of it the food is actually quite sticky so my hand at the moment once i put this food back in the the tub my hand will be quite sticky because it's covered in something called molasses uh, which is basically sugar so it's quite sweet so the lambs and the mummy sheep when they get the chance like to eat it it's nice and tasty for them i'm going to pop this back in here i'll leave the lid off and see if some of the lambs will come over they can smell it so they're they're yeah here's a mummy one coming <laughs> So just while you're calling them over, I'll just remind people, because I think a lot of people joined just after we started. If anyone has questions, if you pop them in the chat, um, I will ask them to Angela and we're going to do, try and answer everything that comes through this morning. But we already have one question, Angela, and it's from Cameron. Oh, sorry. You all right? Yeah. Okay. So we've got a question from Cameron, who's at Pitcowdy Primary School, and he would like to know how old the, sh the mummy sheep are. So the mummy sheep will have their first babies when they're two years old. So sheep grow really, really quickly compared to humans. We take ages. So if you think of a baby, um, it takes maybe up to a year, two years to be able to walk and talk. Whereas little lambs, usually within the first five minutes after being born, are able to get up on their feet and move about. So they grow really, really quickly. Um, so some of you might have dogs at home and you might know that for every um, one human year, there's about seven to eight dog years in that one human year. So dogs age much, much quicker than us as well. Sheep are pretty much the same. So by the time they are two years old, they are adults um, and they will be big enough, like these ones here, to go away and have their own babies. So the ones that we've got in the shed here range, the mummy ones range from two years old um, and I think our oldest one is seven years old in the shed here. And I've also got quite a few people actually asking. So I've got Jensen from Bowness Primary School. I've got Joey from Lang Lee. And I think I saw someone else um, from Echlin Primary School. They're all asking, have they all got names? Um, some of these ones have names because um, we've only got a few here. Um, they do. Some of them do have names. So this one that's desperately trying to get in the feed in here. I don't know. You can maybe just see her head popping up and down. Um, this are, oh, if I move the bucket, she might become a wee bit closer. Um, this is our oldest sheep. There she is. There she is. So this is Molly. Uh, Molly is seven years old, and yeah, she she knows what food is, don't you? So she's yeah, she's a bit of a pet. Who else have we got in here? So see, I just move this a little bit. Um, we have one. Where is she? Can't see her. Must be right over at the back. And um, we've got one called Queenie. Um, who was a little pet lamb. Queenie's five years old. Um, she was a little pet lamb. So her mummy was poorly when she was born. Um, and I had to be be mum for her. Um, so Queenie, Queenie's been here since she was a little baby. And now she has lambs. She's on her third year of having little baby lambs. So when Queenie was born, actually, I brought one of these out to show you. When Queenie was born, I had to use a bottle like this. Um, we have special milk, so um, when the babies are born, they will drink milk from their mummy's udder, um, which is found underneath their body, just in front of their back legs. Um, and when the sheep is pregnant, its body starts to produce milk because it's a mammal, and that's what all mammals do when they're pregnant and have a baby. Um, but because Queenie's mummy was sick, we have to use special formula milk. So it's just like human babies. Um, that you can get formula milk and it looks like this, like a powder. It smells really, really nice. And we mix that with water um, and then we pop it in a bottle like this and the little baby lambs will drink it. Sorry, I've got Molly trying to get into the milk powder now. Behave, you're on camera. So, um, so St Ogilvy Primary 
two class, Angela, are asking, if they don't all have names, how can you tell them apart? Uh, so everybody thinks it must be really, really difficult um, to tell the animals apart. And although to you guys, they probably all look exactly the same, to us, they're all slightly different. Because we're working with them every day, we get to know them and they've all got their own personalities. Um, so some of them are quite, quite nosy um, and quite brave, like Molly here, Feeney. Um, but some of them are much more shy and will stay back. But they have tags in their ears. So instead of all of them being known by a name, they all have their own special number, which is written on their tags in their ears. So some of our, the first batch of lambs that are here have all been tagged. Um, you might see some of them. So there's one just there behind that sheet. Um, it's got tags in its ears, but some of the other ones, a younger batch, haven't been tagged yet. So they'll be getting done this coming weekend when they get their first lot of vaccinations. And we've just got a few people, I think, who joined us a little bit late who are asking, what breed have you got, Angela? And what was the breed of, how did you cross, what was the cross that you also used? Okay, so these are border Leicester sheep. And they're the only breed of sheep that you get with a white face and these two big long ears that stick straight up on the top of their head. Most sheep tend to have ears that kind of go out at an angle. Um, but the border lesters are the only ones that have these upright ears. Um, so they look really, really, um, really, really good. They're really, really recognisable. Um, but we use our other flock of sheep, our North Country Cheviots. Um, and they tend to have ears which go out to the side, but they're more upright than some. Um, but when you cross the border lesser with them, they end up with quite, quite alert looking ears um, and they're a, a really nice sheep to work with, a really hardy sheep um, and really really good mums and that's what we want, we want sheep that are really really good mums that are going to look after their babies um, and give them lots of milk to make them glow. So Orla from Primary 4, she comes from Auchin Craig Primary and she's asked are any of your sheep rare breeds and are any of them black? So uh, Border Leicesters are a rare breed sheep um, so that that means that there's not a huge number of them um, in the world. Um, we have quite a lot in the United Kingdom because that's where they originate from. Um, they originally come from um, Northumberland area, um, Scottish Borders direction. Um, so that's why they get part of their name. Um, so they're a native breed. So that means that they come originally from this country. Um, and but they are classed as a rare breed. They used to be really, really popular, um, but another breed called the blue-faced Leicester kind of took over. Um, it was quite similar, um, but people tended to like it that wee bit better. So the border Leicesters are currently classed as a rare breed, but they are getting more popular, um, especially with young people because they're really quite friendly as well. They're big sheep they're very big sheep so you need to be quite strong to be able to handle them um, but they're quite friendly um, and we don't have any black ones there is the occasional black border lester um, going about um, but the traditional ones are white and I've been looking down all the questions Angela and there are, I can't tell you how many people have asked why have they all got different colours on their backs oh the favourite question so um, there's various reasons so when the sheep are pregnant, we get somebody to come along and scan their tummies so that we can find out how many lambs they're having. So just like if anybody's got a little baby brother or sister, your mummy would have gone to the hospital and she'd have got a picture taken of the baby growing inside her tummy, um, usually a black and white picture. So it's exactly the same. We don't take the, the, the sheep to the hospital, but somebody comes to the farm and they have exactly the same kind of machine and they, they roll a little um, handpiece on their underside of their tummy and they're able to tell us how many lambs. So we put a mark on their back at that point so that we know how many lambs each sheep is having because sometimes they'll have just one lamb, sometimes they'll have two lambs and sometimes they'll have three or more. Um, usually we don't have any more than three lambs um, being born at one time. 
So but it, but we mark them so that um, the ones that are having more than one lamb get a little bit of extra food while they're pregnant because the lambs growing inside the, their bodies grow really, really quickly and use up lots of the mummy's energy. So we need to give the mummies a wee bit extra food just to make sure she's got lots of energy to keep her nice and healthy and to keep our lambs growing inside her until they're born. Um, and also give her body the chance to make lots of nice good milk so that the lambs have got lots to drink when they're born, because that's the best thing for them. Um, and what was the other part of that question? Is that the, oh, so is that all the, yeah, yeah. So um, once they're born, um, so on some farms, um, on our other farm, we put a number on their side so that we can match them up. But we on here for our border Leicesters, we put a coloured mark um, on the mum and a matching one on the lamb. And the reason we do that is because we show some of these sheep um, at our local agricultural shows. Um, and it's easier to remove a, a bit of a coloured dot than it is to remove a big number from the side of the sheep's body. Um, so it makes life a wee bit easier for us as the time goes on. And so why do you need to mark the mum and the lamb? Does the mum not know which lamb belongs to her herself? Yeah, so the mum knows um, which lamb belongs to her. So they use their smell um, and their eyesight to recognise their lambs and their ears because they all have on cue there, they all have a different bleat um, or a different ba, um, and the mum will know her baby by sound and by smell. Smell's the main thing. Um, but for us, we, we can't recognise them like that. So it's for us that we put the coloured marks on. So if, for example, when they're out in the field and there's a little lamb that's gone away from all the rest of the sheep, if it's got, say, a blue mark on its shoulder, we would be able to pick it up and take it back nearer to its mummy and match it up with the mummy sheep that's got a blue mark on her shoulder. So the colours help the humans um, with different things rather than helping the sheep. Um, and we've got a question from Edward at Bowness Primary 2s. He wants to know how long the sheep are pregnant for. Oh, good question. So the sheep are pregnant for just over five months. Five months and five days is the usual rule. Um, but some of them can go a wee bit earlier or some of them can go a wee bit longer. Usually if they're having more than two lambs, they might go a wee bit earlier than their date. Um, and sometimes if they're just having one lamb, they might go a wee bit over their due date. So we know exactly when the, the, the daddy sheep, the tops, have gone in beside the mummy sheep. So we know that five months roughly after that date, we should be expecting lambs. Um, so usually about two weeks before that, we'll bring the mummy sheep into the shed so that we can keep a wee eye on them. We've got a wee camera. I don't know if you'll be able to see it from here, um, but we've got a wee camera up on the wall at the other side of the shed. So when we are in our beds at night, because the sheep can lamb at any time of the day or night. So when we're in our beds at night or if we're away from the farm, we can switch the camera on and we can check on the sheep to make sure that everybody's OK um, and not disturb them um, unless we really have to. So sometimes they have difficulties when they're being born. So when a little lamb is being born, it should come out in what's called diving position. So it should come out with its front feet and its nose first, um, but sometimes its legs get stuck behind it and it just comes out with a head um, and it won't be able to be born itself that way. We'll need to help out or it might be coming with a head and one leg or sometimes it can be totally uh, turned round inside its mummy and it might be coming with its bottom first um, and it can be born like that, but it needs um, us to help out to make sure it's born safely. So it's a full-time job when it's lambing um, and sometimes it doesn't go quite to plan, but it's really, really good when it does. Um, I've so got I another question. Yeah, I've got... <laughs> <laughs> I've got another question from Kyle in primary four who comes from Lead Hills Primary School. And I think you've told us that the lambs drink milk, but he's asking, what do the sheep drink? So the sheep just drink water. 
Um, so the lambs will drink milk for the first few months and um, to begin with, for the first few weeks, that's all they'll have. And the milk provides all the nutrition and all the energy that those little grow, uh, growing lambs will need. But as they start to get bigger, and their tummies start to get stronger, they'll start to nibble on hay, because their mummies eat hay when they're in the shed, and the lambs are very much like copycats. They will try and do whatever their mum's doing, or the smaller lambs will try and copy the older lambs. So if they see them eating hay, they'll go and try and have a wee nibble. Um, and to start with, they don't really know that actually they're eating, um, but as they start to get the taste for it and whatnot, they'll start to eat more. And over the months, um, they'll start to eat more hay. Oh, sorry, somebody's trying to get into this bucket to move it. Um, they'll start to eat more solid food, so more hay and more grass when they go outside and have less milk. Um, and that's called weaning, when they get to the stage where their bodies are able to take in lots of solid food and they're not really needing the milk. So usually kind of anything between three and five months um, is weaning time, depending on how they're growing um, and how the mummies are as well. So if the mummies are, are kind of, if the weather's not very good and the mummies haven't got a lot of energy, we might wean the lambs a little bit earlier so that the mummies can get recovering. Um, or if it's a really good year and there's lots of grass, we might keep the lambs beside their mummies for a little while longer because sometimes the mummies can eat too much um, and then get a bit fat. So it just, it, it depends from year to year, especially about the weather. Somebody's <laughs> getting a mask here. Sorry, I don't if you so, can see <laughs> the sound. Did a wee massage, yeah. Were you doing a wee massage? That was nice. So, um, <laughs> so Toby from Langley Primary School has asked you if the sheep have any snacks. Do you give them anything like fruit or apples or chocolate biscuits? No, we don't give them anything like that. Um, purely, um, just shortly. Now that the weather's a little bit better and it's a mu it's much warmer at night, um, the sheep will be outside all day and all night. Um, and the, the adult ones will just have water to drink and they'll eat grass um, and the baby ones will do the same. They'll have, be having milk, they'll start drinking a little bit of water, they'll be nibbling away at grass, but they'll also get their special foods that I showed you as well. Um, and that just makes sure that they're getting everything that their little growing bodies need, but they don't get any snacks. So compared to humans, Sheep are super duper healthy. No sweeties, no fizzy juice, no pizzas, nothing like that. Um, and there's a, quite a few questions um, about when do the lambs sleep? So um, so I've got Omar from Karen Primary School asking if they've got a special bedtime. Um, and I've also got someone else, and I can't find the question now, but asking how long do they sleep every day? Oh, that's a really good question. And again, it varies. Um, so some of them are quite lazy um, and will like to snooze on and off throughout the day. Other ones are full of energy and just like humans, they won't need a huge amount of sleep. But they don't tend to have a strict bedtime so much like us. Um, they tend to snooze on and off throughout the day. Um, but they will usually when it gets dark things start to settle down um, and it's much, much quieter. So normally if you switch the camera on um, at night time, once it's dark, everybody's quite happy. They've usually done most of their eating during the day while it's been daylight and they'll go away. They've got nice full tummies and they'll go away and lie down and pretty much relax most of the night. They tend to get up much earlier in the morning, um, so they'll start kind of moving about from usually about four o'clock. Whenever the sun's rising, um, they start to get a wee bit more active. Um, but yeah, they're lucky. They don't have work to go to or school to go to or nursery to go to, so they can have wee naps whenever they fancy. Um, I quite like a wee nap myself, but it doesn't happen very often. <laughs> Um, so I've got a question from St Andrews High School. They've been asking about the weather this year um, and saying would, so your sheep are inside just now, would they be outside if it was warmer? Has it had any effect on what's happened to your lambing this year? Yeah, so um, these ones are born, because these ones start lambing in February, 
um, they're always indoors for lambing um, because the weather can be so, so variable. Um, but our other flock of sheep at the other farm, usually we lamb them indoors as well, just so that it's easy for us to keep an eye on everything. Um, but normally they would have their baby lamb, they would be put in a little pen with that lamb for a day to make sure that it's, it's bonded and that the lamb's feeding and there's no problem. Then they would get transferred to a bigger pen, a nursery pen, where they're mixed with other mums and baby lambs. Um, and then if everything's okay there, they get fired back outside to the grass. But unfortunately, this year, with the way the weather was, we started lambing our other flock of sheep at the end of March. Um, and then over the, the Easter holidays, and the weather was just absolutely awful. So we weren't able to get any of the sheep and lambs outside into the fields where we would like to have them. Um, so we're busy having to clear out other sheds so that we could keep them all indoors. The problem is if you put lambs outside and it's really, really wet and really, really cold, like it has been, then the little lambs get chilled and they can get hypothermia. And if you don't catch them really, really quickly, then unfortunately they can die. Um, and we have had some, unfortunately, that we've lost this year because of the weather. Um, but we're very lucky because there's some other farmers um, that lamb all of their sheep outdoors. Um, and all those little lambs that were being born during the bad weather there, they've unfortunately, they've lost a lot of lambs. So, yeah, the weather plays a huge, huge part in whether or not you have a good lamb in or a not so good lambing. So I think most farmers up and down the country, unfortunately, will remember 2024 lambing season for all the wrong reasons. Um, but that's the way it goes. Last year was a great lambing season. The weather was lovely. So you just have to work with it and try and do your best. So Angela, I'm afraid we're getting towards the end of our time. And I think you're hoping to put these sheep back outside. Yes. So would so you like I to do that with us? I, I'm just going to say there are lots of questions that we haven't had a chance to answer. But as soon as we go off this call, Angela is going to make sure she answers all of these questions for you. Um, and there'll be a quick link popped into the chat so that you can access that and get the answers to your questions um, after we've seen the sheep going back to their field. OK, right. I'm going to turn the camera around so you'll not see me. That there, okay. Right, I'm going to go open this gate. Come on in. You're mad, da. Come on. Gate here. Here they come. They know what's happening. I'm just going to get this one here out of this little pen yeah. so it doesn't get left behind. Here you come. Come on. Let's go. Going outside. He goes. Okay, that's a little special pen just for the lambs to get into. It's got a special little gate there that only the lambs can fit through, and that's where they can get their food. So, right, we'll open this gate here. Oh. I know where they're going. It looks like you've got quite a nice day today, Angela. Is it sunny on your farm? It's it's not sunny, it's cloudy, but it's dry, so we'll quite happily take that. Here we go. So you might spot there's a couple that have actually been sheared already, so they've had their wool taken off them. Um, so they're ones that we're hoping to take to some of the shows just shortly. Yeah, they, they definitely seem to know. They know exactly where they're going. <laughs> they know exactly. They're all queued up here at the gate. So you're not going to keep them in your garden? No, I'm not going to keep them in the garden. Although they're great lawnmowers, but I'm just going to dive over here so we can open the gate for them. Oh, yeah. Right, here we go.
Well, thank you very much, Angela. Thank you for letting us meet all your sheep today. Um, as I said, all the questions we haven't had a chance to answer, we will answer immediately after this session. And there's also a whole series of different activities that you might like to try in class later on today. And we'll also pop that link up in the chat so that you can have a look at some of them. And we can see the lambs dancing, Angela. They're really pleased to be out. <laughs> yeah, they're really happy. Uh, the only thing is, there's a whole dose of them still in my garden. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can get them. They're like, oh, this is great. Thanks very much. We'll just have a play in here. Here we go. Lammies. There we go. They know where to go. Last one. <laughs> there we go. That's them. So lovely to meet you all. Um, there are more sessions to meet the lambs um, through the week. We're going to different farms um, across Scotland. So if you have more questions or you would like to meet more lambs, then you can join us other days this week. Thanks, Angela. Thank you. See you later. Bye.